fourth Sunday, the final Sunday of Advent, Luke 2.10. I think I can never find here. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Which was last week's. It is. I wanted peace on earth, goodwill towards men. So, who will say it? Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. <laughs> Let us pray this morning. Loving and gracious Father, we're thankful to be gathered together this morning in your house, Lord. For your word, this time of Christmas, our time of celebration of of Jesus' birth, Lord, and pray just be with us this morning, direct us and guide us, and let us carry this Merry Christmas feeling with us for the whole year long. We, let me back up. We're here for the announcement of Christmas today, and there's two responses when you're told that Jesus is born. Mary pondered these things in her heart, and that's the purpose of these Advent lessons, because I there's nothing new in the Christmas story I'm going to tell you guys, I'm pretty sure. But if you would just stop and smell the roses, stop and ponder what these things mean. And the other response was from Herod and Jerusalem, and they were all troubled. And that's what you get today. Well, mostly troubled, but if you tell somebody about God, they're either happy and to be saved, or they're troubled. Because this just changes everything. Can you imagine life? It was the same, basically, from Adam and Eve to what we would call Christmas. Now, I'm not going to argue whether it's 6,000 years or 60,000 years, whatever it was. There was no redemption for mankind. And this was so important to change the very way that we, we tell time. It's been 2,023 years, more or less, give or take. I mean, I, after 100, I, I miscount, so, you know. <laughs> But if we go over and just review our, our Advent candles here, the first one was prophecy that Isaiah, 500 years before Christ was born, prophesied that Jesus would come. And, you know, not, not to be too, too uppity, uh, I haven't seen that prophecy about Muhammad coming or Buddha being born or Confucius or anybody else. But before this happened, we were told. In the first candle, we celebrate... The three comings of Christ, which I, I just really enjoy because it's always a nice argument on how many times God's going to come and you can sit there and then debate and all that. The three comings of Christ I'm going to define as past, present, future. We know that Christ came back 2,000 years ago. We know that Christ is coming in our heart or lives in our heart. And we know that Christ will come back again. Set your candles, a Bethlehem candle, a candle of faith, a preparation. When you get to have a baby born to you, there's preparation. It never goes right, but you, you believe you get things together to go to the hospital and you build the cabinet or the, 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 the swing and all the toys and get the nursery ready and all that. And then God says, oh, yeah, you're going to go to uh, Bethlehem and pay taxes instead. Yeah, you know, that's, that's how the world works. The third candle, the candle that is pink, is a candle of joy. Not too many things more joyous in the world than a child being born, though the world won't tell you so. Not too many things more joyous than God himself coming to earth. The great I am. And our last candle today is peace. And it's not really peace between you and I. It's not peace between Ukraine and Russia. This peace is the peace between us and God. Joy to the world says it best. God and man reconciled. There is no peace outside of that. Up until this time, thousands and thousands of years, from Adam and Eve to Christ, we've been at war with God. Rebellious, stubborn, doing our own way. And that's why the world is scared of us today. I always find it amazing. You can go out and you can tell people the sky is pink, and you know what they tell you, the sky is yellow or the sky is deep blue well heck it is deep blue never mind <laughs> the sky is some color nobody cares they just look at you like okay fine you think the world's pink that's that's great you go out there and tell them there's a god oh my god that's mythology there's might be an easter bunny tell people you believe in the easter bunny nobody cares tell them you believe in god now we got a problem <laughs> all the jerusalem was troubled but this peace that we experience at this time and 
fulfill what we would call Easter in a, in a few months. The peace that we are reconciled, there is a hope, we are saved. There is a life after this one. And all of that is wrapped up here in Christmas. It all starts with a child. It all starts with, as the other hymn would say, God's word wrapped in flesh. God incarnate. Emmanuel. And all these Christmas songs, which are, I'm amused on how theologically correct they are, that, you know, it's just these hard concepts put to music. The idea that the I am is born. The I, I am became flesh. That we are redeemed. There is a hope. There is a future. We have something to live for. There is a God. All that's wrapped up here in this Christmas spirit and this Christmas time. And with that, I'm not going to be a dead horse to, to death. Let us pray. Dear loving Father, we are thankful for this Christmas, Lord. We are thankful for your Son. We're thankful for the redemption. We're thankful for the peace and the joy, the love, the grace. We're thankful for all you've done, for all you've given us, for what we can do, what we will do, and what we should do. I pray you direct our, our steps, direct our, our work, direct to all that we should do in the coming weeks, in the coming years, and whatever we have left, decades and whatever. Pray that we do your work, do your name, and do what we should. Pray for all these things in your name. Amen. Let's go eat some lunch. <laughs> <laughs>